What's Gucci everyone? It's AJ here again, and this video is going to be about memory allocation and how implicit lists and explicit lists work, which is really good to know if you're ever implementing a memory allocator like the method malloc and free, for example. Now, first of all, I want to set the stage for you guys. In my memory allocator, or in my dynamic memory allocator, in, in the computer world, you have a heap. Now the heap is where anything dynamically allocated gets stored. This is where your objects can get stored and arrays of unknown size or arrays that you don't know the size of until runtime get stored. You know, um, dynamic things, things that, things that can change. That's what dynamic is, change, flexibility, as it, everything in life changes. And so th that is what is stored in the heap. And so when I call malloc, if you know C, or I call new in Java, I allocate memory for something, and I allocate a certain size memory depending on the size of that object. So the size of that object is determined at runtime, so it is dynamic, such as also when you use malloc, the size of a struct is determined at runtime. And so what we want to do here is we want to go over implicit lists and free lists. And so the way that your computer takes, tra takes track of this memory and where it's stored and the size of the heap depends on how you keep track of it, really. So one way you can do it is with an implicit list. And the way this works is that imagine your heap. Imagine you have your heap and your heap is just one huge linked list. Your heap, as you can see in this picture right here, your heap is just one huge linked list. What you're going to do is whenever you need a free block or you need memory for your dynamic, for your dynamic memory allocator, you're going to look at this implicit list. And at, inside this implicit list here, you can see it's going to look like this. And it's going to have, uh, in the beginning, it's going to have the size, so how many bytes it can hold, and then kind of a uh, free bit. And um, the, the free bit is just, an, it indicates if it's free or if it's not free, if it's taken up. Because if it's not, if it's taken up, you know, you can't use that space. And then right after the size and the free bit is the payload. And that's where you can store your memory. You know, you can store the name of someone, or you can store your array, or you can store whatever you want. And then you can have optional padding for whatever, but in that in implicit list, you really don't need that. And so what you can do here is, as you can see in your implicit list, you can start at the very beginning of the heap, and the heap is going to tell you the size, the size of the heap, the size of the payload. And so with that size of the payload, and the fact that I know that there's another bit for the free bit, I know how many bit bytes to advance to get to the next block and look at that size, and then see if it's free or not, and then I can keep going down the heap, which is pretty nice. So that's an implicit list. So the implicit list will span the entire heap, and it will not, it doesn't necessarily have a link to the next node, but I can use the side to be able to traverse it in memory, especially and see where I can go, I can go up and down by bytes. And now when we have an explicit list, we have something very different and something that's very cool. So an explicit list, we're going to have something different in that now, instead of, we're going to have, you know, if it's free or not, and we're going to have the size. But now what we're going to do is we're going to have a node to the next, we're going to have a node to the next free block. So in this explicit list, the explicit list is explicit, you know, it's very um, important that the explicit list just has the list of the free blocks. So implicit list will have everything, but explicit will carry everything and you will be able to just see the free blocks so I know when I know I just have the free blocks so what an explicit list is going to do is it's not going to have that free bit but it's going to have pointers a pointer to the next free block which you're going to set in your dynamic memory allocator so when you free something from your from your implicit list or free something that used to take up memory you add it to your explicit list and then you can say okay that's free memory and then so there you go and then so then you just have the free block so you can just go through the free block and look for you know something of the size that you want which is very nice and then so there are also segregated free lists which are explicit lists but what a segregated list is very important i don't want to waste all this time traversing you know my huge my whole heap looking for an appropriate size so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have multiple lists and each of these lists can only contain up to a certain size. So maybe I have a list, I have a list of my first list can only contain a size of 0 to 8. My second list is 8 to 16. And my third list is 16 and above. And so that way, if I need something of size 4, I'll just look through the first list 
but I'll look through the first list first to see if there's anything there. So first of all, I don't get a lot of fragmentation, meaning I use as many I use as many bytes as I can, and you know I'm I don't waste a lot of time. It's more efficient because I have a better chance of finding something that's free if or something of that size if I search in you know the appropriate size to list, which is pretty nice. So that's again a segregated free list. It's where you have different lists that are sorted by the size that they are at. And that is about it for now. I'm going to make another video about the next, the best ways to fit inside a list. But implicit lists go through the whole heap and can be very inefficient and store free blocks and not free blocks. And segregated free lists, segregated lists, implicit lists do not. They just they just have regular free blocks. And that's very nice because in your dynamic memory allocator, whenever you dynamically want something, you just want a free block. So it's very, it's much more efficient to use an explicit list for your time. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day.